What does the decade of the 20s hold for drones? I'm Tanya Hall, and joining me is Arthur Holland Michelle, co director of the Center for the Study of the Drone at New York's Bard College and author of Eyes in the Sky. Welcome, Arthur. Great to be here, Tanya. So, again, give us a refresher here. How did you become so involved in, in drones? So back in like 2010, 2011, I was a student in college and sort of all of a sudden I became really interested in drones, even though it had nothing to do with my academic sort of subject. To me, drones just seemed so interesting and they raised all kinds of questions that were complex and challenging and no one really had the answer to. So I said, hey, why don't we study this stuff? And uh, I literally created this little institute at my college, the Center for the Study of the Drone in 2012. And by the time I graduated in 2013, it had taken on a bit of its, uh, a sort of life of its own. And here we are uh, <laughs> seven years later and going strong. Looking at the overall drone market as 2019 comes to an end, what are some of the significant milestones we've achieved so far? Significant milestones that we've achieved so far. You know, the, there have been a few sort of um, step function moments to use as mathematical lingo. Um, a big one came actually not this year, but a couple of years ago in 2016 when the FAA opened up the airspace for drone users. Before that, it was very complex to get into the airspace. You needed a special waiver, all these complex licenses. They really streamlined things. Since then, it has been more a matter of sort of incremental steps. Um, at least in terms of the airspace sort of opening up easier authorizations, more permissions, different permissions for flying at night and all sorts of things that used to be prohibited. That's on the regulatory side. On the technology side, again, um, you know, drones really sort of took everyone by surprise in the early 2010s. Like before, you know, that time it was really difficult to fly model airplanes. It was expensive. You needed a lot of experience. And then suddenly there was the drones that were like really easy to fly and pretty cheap. And that took everyone by surprise. But since then, again, the technology, it's improved incredibly. But, you know, we haven't had that revolutionary moment again. I mean, we're still sort of working through all the complexities of that re revolution. But what has happened in the last couple of years? Drones have gotten really, really smart. I mean, you know, if I bought a drone when I started researching the topic, as, as we did, it didn't, you know, it, could, it crashed into anything that came near it. It, it didn't have particularly good video. Uh, it couldn't do any tricks on its own. Now it's incredible. I mean, you can get a drone uh, to follow you wherever you go to give you some really nice sort of tracking footage. You can get it to fly in circular orbits. If a helicopter comes by or, uh, you know, some other obstacle, a tree, um, the drone may be smart enough to actually avoid it autonomously. Um, so it's really night and day if you look at where the technology was, say, a decade ago and where it is today right now but milestones is 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 maybe a little bit of a, a a sort of relative term um here and then it's just the 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 huge adoption of the technology i mean every week i am literally seeing new applications for the technology people figuring out different things to do with it as well as new technological developments that it's going to make it only more capable into the future and I, you've mentioned some, some great advancements, but I can't believe I'm going to ask you this question. But speaking of technology, where are we at with battery tech? Battery tech, that has been one of the ones that has taken a little while to, to sort of catch up, you know, and it's actually one of the main limiting factors with drones. Look, one of the things that happens to me when I go to, you know, events and meet people, well, there are two things. One is people say, when are we going to have drone deliveries? I have to sort of explain that, it, well, we're going to wait a little longer. But the other thing is, hey, I have a friend who's got this great idea for a drone startup. Let me tell you about it. And 90% of the time, I have to disappoint this person and say drones just don't have the, the flight endurance to do that thing. And that's because the, the battery tech isn't quite there yet. Um, you know, what, what did I hear last week? Oh, drones for 
you know, autonomous perimeter security checking for very large properties. Okay, I mean, that's going to work, but for only 20 minutes and then the drone's going to need to recharge. You're going to have a bunch of drones. Once the, the battery tech gets better, then you are going to see all sorts of new possibilities opening up. And we are starting to see small steps in that, in that direction, which together are going to, you know, amount to a, a, a big uh, sort of uh, jump in capability. You are now starting to see multi-rotor drones that are pushing an hour of endurance, maybe more. Um, there's a company in possible aerospace that claims 90 minutes of endurance with its multi-rotor drone. You know, that's, that's, that's a big improvement over 20 minutes. Um, so that's one of those sort of key focus areas that we really need to pay attention on in, in the years ahead because there's going to be a lot of a lot happening there's a lot of investment certainly so what about privacy we've talked about the issue uh in the past um about drones flying over our property and and airspace but there's the issue of the mass data gathering by commercial drone operators and there's the issue of all of that data sent back to the drones manufacturer, which might be in a country that might not have our best interest at heart. Yeah, so you've touched on what is perhaps one of, uh, when you're talking about milestones earlier, I can certainly talk about controversies because there's no shortage of controversies in the world of drones. And one of the biggest ones this year has had to do with uh, not just any drone company, the drone company, DJI, which is based in China, which has been phenomenally popular. But in the last couple of years, a number of Western government agencies have started to raise the alarm that, hey, this technology is created in China, and so, uh, you know, that may pose certain uh, vulnerabilities. Now, DJI has vigorously denied a lot of the claims about, about security vulnerabilities. A lot of the findings from governments that are concerned about DJI drones are classified, so it's hard from our perspective to sort of say who's right and who's wrong and how much of this is true and how much is, you know, politics or whatever the case may be. Um, but it's certainly a consideration. I mean, just as we've seen with other sort of verticals of technology, um, you know, uh, not all drone technology is made stateside uh, by companies that have, you know, really strong security uh, sort of background. And even if there's no malicious intent there, it still creates a vulnerability. You know, you're still talking about data being stored somewhere. And as I like to say, data is a vulnerability and it's very hard to keep data safe and drones collect really, really high quality data. Um, so it's certainly something that uh, it seems needs a little bit of work. Uh, we can expect a, a, a bit of a fight ahead when it comes specifically to the case of the Chinese drones and it's it's a big issue because as even the US government will admit um, these drones uh, you know they don't really have any competitors I mean if you want a small cheap drone the, the Department of Interior has said that you know th they kind of rely on on these Chinese DJI drones because they're just so way ahead of the competition so how we balance that um, yeah we'll, we'll have to see you mentioned controversies. Is is it a controversy then that our military is so heavily reliant upon drones and, and for good reason? Is it a controversy? You know, as people like to say, the technology is neutral. It's a matter of how you use it. Drones can be used for all sorts of beneficial purposes. They can also be used in ways that are harming and uh, and, and ways that will, um, you know, that, that, that should indeed be frowned upon. Um, it's true also that the technology may lend itself to certain applications or certain temptations. Um, and so that's why there needs to be a really, um, a close level of scrutiny on how the technology is used, how, how it's developed. And, and that is a conversation that is happening. Even within the military, you are starting to see a consciousness that, hey, you know, especially as this technology becomes more artificially intelligent, 
there are some real perils here. And so we've got to do this carefully and cautiously and not be reckless about it. And that, I mean, that is night and day compared to a few years ago. Just a, a few days ago, the Department of Defense actually released ethical principles for the use of artificial intelligence in, in warfare, um, addressing some of the concerns that, that it could potentially raise. So we've talked about concerns and, and some of the, the issues, but looking forward into the 2020s, what are some of the unrealized use cases that offer some great promise? Well, you know, there's not only package delivery, which is the one that everyone talks about, um, which is kind of interesting and sexy. You know, everyone wants to have pizza delivered to their door in 30 minutes or less by a drone. Um, but there are also what, what one might call some of the more sort of behind the scenes applications. Um, cargo, you know, cargo is, is an area that people don't think about so much, but is enormously important. Uh, the, the use of uh, ground vehicles for cargo can be damaging for the environment. Uh, if you can use very large, in some cases, uh, green powered drones to do those deliveries, you're certainly um, opening up all kinds of opportunities. Um, there are also certainly possibilities for better public security management, traffic management, collecting all kinds of data that people don't usually think about, but it's the kind of thing that makes the world go around urban planning, city planning, things of that nature. And then there's the whole sort of uh, putting drones in harm's way so that we don't have to put humans in harm's way, using drones to inspect, I don't know, dangerous uh, nuclear facilities or oil pipelines or, um, you know, coal mines to make sure that we you know, nothing's dangerous down there, nothing that needs to be addressed. Uh, these are all kinds of applications that I think people don't talk about enough, but it's certainly on the horizon and it's the things that are really gonna make uh, the difference um, in, in the years ahead. Arthur Holland Michelle, co-director of the Center for the Study of the Drone at New York Bard's College, New York, New York's Bard College and Arthur of Eye in the Sky. If somebody wants to get a copy of your book, Arthur, um, what's the best way they can do that? Well, uh, they can uh, find me on my website. It's got all the information that they will need. It is arthurhollandmichelle.com. That's just my name.com. Uh, they can also follow me on Twitter. I am at writearthur, W-R-I-T-E-A-R-T-H-U-R. And you're always tweeting great stuff about what's happening in the drone world. Thanks again, Arthur, for joining us. And if you guys want to find more of my interviews, you can do that right here or go to tanyahall.net. Thanks for watching.